I hope you're all having an amazing weekend so far, but today it's time for a new video and I was sitting there and I was thinking what video should I film this weekend and actually it's been a really long time since I did a makeup tutorial, but let's face it, the only makeup that I do these days is either when I'm filming a video or if I'm seeing people. <laughs> and it tends to be more of like a no makeup makeup look. So that's what I'm gonna do for you today. There's actually quite a few products involved, but the look is very fresh, very subtle. There's lots of glossier. There are no surprises here. You'll probably be able to guess every single step and every single product. But I thought I would show you guys anyway, because it's just the makeup that I love to do, that I love to wear. Although I do really enjoy watching videos of people who wear really gorgeous, glamorous makeup. And I know that some of you guys will too and will probably find this quite boring. So I will link down below for you some of my favorite beauty YouTubers to watch because Jamie Genevieve does amazing looks. I love watching her videos. Raw Beauty Christie, she's great as well. So I'll make sure they're linked down below for you if you do fancy something with a little bit more oomph to it. But today is going to be very natural. So on to step one. I feel like the first step for when you want a very natural makeup look is skincare. And so I will link down below for you all of the skincare stuff that I used this morning. And I'll probably do like a little winter update maybe sometime soon if you'd like to see that because there are a couple of things that I have changed around. Just very rich and nourishing and some kind of oil textures in there as well. So I've done my routine, I've let it sink in a bit, and I have a nice little spot going on here, right in the center of my face. I think the first thing I'm gonna go in with is a primer, because I did put my skincare on maybe like an hour-ish ago now. So it's just nice to get a little bit more moisture back into my skin, and I'm gonna use the Becca First Light Priming Filter. I love this stuff. It looks kind of terrifying in the bottle, but that really doesn't transfer onto the skin at all and I find that that purple tone just helps to add lots of radiance to my skin and like a nice bit of glow. I like to throw on a primer when I'm doing this look because sometimes I just won't use foundation at all. I won't put anything on my face and I'll just go in with a bit of concealer. I was reading a piece on Into the Gloss recently about the high maintenance French woman routine, which, you know, anything that's like Parisian, French, I'm into it, I'm reading it, I'm desperately trying to imitate it. But in that article, the lady, I think she was called Sabina, she mentioned that she just uses concealer and kind of buffs it all over, like where she needs it on her face. I feel like my skin needs a little bit of warmth this morning because it is rather pale, although to be fair, so is my hand. I'm gonna use a tiny, tiny, tiny amount is the Glossier Skin Tint. This is in the shade medium, definitely more of a light right now, but like I said, just to add a little bit of warmth and kind of even things out a little bit, I'm gonna take a couple of drops, like really not a lot of this at all, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. And then basically just press this into my skin just to make things look a little bit more uniform. <laughs> you could use any kind of tinted moisturizer for this or like a light coverage foundation. The Ordinary Serum Foundation is really good, but I like this. This probably looks absolutely no different to you at all, but I feel like it just evens things out and it also adds that glow, which I really like. So I'm quite happy with my base. Right, next concealer. And I have to say, I mean, I've been using the Glossier Stretch Concealer. Look at that, reach the bottom, absolutely love it. That is in the shade Light. But I also have been feeling the NARS Soft Matte Complete Conceal it in the shade light to vanilla. And I like this one because sometimes I find the Glossier can be a little bit greasy. If my skin is having one of those days where it doesn't need any help with hydration and it's kind of juicy and I've been drinking my water and eating my vegetables and all that kind of stuff, I don't necessarily need this, especially if it's a little bit hotter. So sometimes I prefer something that is a little bit more matte. Don't be put off because this definitely isn't matte matte. It's definitely not like drying or dehydrating or anything. And actually a mix of the two is really nice. So sometimes I'll go in with the Glossier, put that on, pat a bit of this on top, go in with a beauty blender and be done. But I actually think today, just to mix it up a little bit, I'll do the NARS for you. So I will put this on my spot, on any dark circles I've got going on, on my nose, because that tends to be a little bit red compared to other places on my face, and then also around my moustache area. I just find this looks really natural, especially when you blend it in with your fingers or, ta-da, beauty blender. The thing I like about using a beauty blender when it does come to these really natural looks is that I find that it takes off any excess. So any excess that is gonna sit in lines under your eyes, I feel is removed by this, which is great. Now the base is a little bit too uniform, so I'm gonna go in with a bronzer. And I've really been enjoying the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. This is the light, medium, 
Slim Matte one. I like this tone because it's not too orange. You can see it's kind of got a bit of a greyish tone to it. So it sort of works as like a contouring, sculpting, bronzing step and just adds a really nice tone on the cheeks. So I'm taking that on a MAC 150 brush, making sure it's fully loaded up and then kind of patting it where I would normally put a bronzer but kind of trying to get a bit of sculpting out of it as well. I start being really precise and then by the end of it I've just applied it all over my face but I just think that looks a little bit better because I'm not so uniform and flat there's like a bit of shape in my face. Lots of shape in my face. To finish off the face, I am going to use a bit of blush. I always feel so proud of myself when I use blush because I never normally use it. But I feel like this shade, it's the Glossier Cloud Paint in the shade Dusk. I feel like this is just so natural looking and just very perky. I feel like it kind of wakes me up, makes me look like I've been outside and got a bit of fresh air. And I think that look is really nice in the autumn winter. So just taking that on my fingers and then blending that out. And then again, just going over with the Beauty Blender. For highlighter, I'm going to do the step that I've done in basically every video for like the whole year. Uh, it's the Glossier Halo Scope in the shade Quartz and I just apply this on my fingers, rub them together, get a bit of heat going on, and then put this on my cheeks. I honestly haven't used a powder highlight for months and I still stand by the fact that the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade God, it's been so long, Moonstone, that's the one. I still think that is the most finely milled beautiful powder but I just noticed when I was wearing it, it just looks like powder on my skin. It looks like almost eyeshadowy on my cheeks and I don't like that look. It looks a bit too shimmery, a bit too obvious. I feel like this gives my skin glow but in a really natural, oh her skincare is on point and she looks healthy kind of way. Now what you do with your brows is going to depend on what yours look like naturally because if they're naturally a bit sparse, a bit thin, you might want to fill them in but perhaps not go like the full Cara Delevingne brow because mine are absolutely massive and I have to say I'm quite enjoying them like this. I haven't got any urge to go get them HD browed or I probably could do with getting them threaded but I'm quite happy with how they look. They look quite beefy, quite meaty. So I actually am going to fill them in a little bit because my eyebrows are naturally massive so I feel like I can kind of get away with it. And I'm just filling them in with the IT Cosmetics Power Brow. It comes in one universal shade which I normally think is a bit like one universal shade for everyone really. It's not good. It's not going to be universally flattering. There will definitely be some people some hair colours that won't work with this but for me I actually find if you're like a rich deep brunette this is a really nice shade because it's not too warm. It's like a little bit grey. Do I look even? They always look even in real life and then when I go to edit the video I'm like, whoa! <laughs> they definitely weren't even, girl. And then I'm just finishing them off with the Glossier Boy Brow which is completely rubbed off. This is in the shade Brown, although it's really got to the end and I personally love it when it gets to the end and dries out because there's barely anything going on my brows here. It's just very much kind of brushing them, setting them a little but not really a lot. I find that when I first get this and it's fresh, way too much product comes out, I don't know what to do with myself. And I keep seeing people do this. Ooh, this makes me feel funny. Ooh, like backcombing them and then putting it into position. Makes me feel funny, but I do feel like it kind of works. So my brows are huge, but it's time to move on to eyes. And I feel like with the whole no makeup thing, really eyeshadow isn't something that's very easy to make look natural. I feel like if you add something that's shimmery, it's gonna look like you've got glitter on your eye. If you add something that's matte, that's also not really reflective of what your eyelid naturally looks like. My eyelids are naturally quite greasy. There's always a bit of a shine going on there. So I find work, work with what you've got. If you do have quite a matte eyelid, then you could make a matte work. And if you do have more of a greasy eyelid, you probably could make a very subtle shimmer work. Personally, I'm into the MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pot in the shade Groundwork. This is really a nothing key colour. Like, I'll put this on now and you'll be like, I can kind of see it, but not massively. And in the theme of keeping things quick and simple and subtle and natural, I'm just going to apply this onto my eyelids with my finger. To just find is such a quick and easy way. Give it like, push it around, massage it around a bit. Yeah, that'll do. I'm trying to get out of my funk of wearing MAC Sober or the Anastasia Caramel every day. Those are just my favorite colors. I prefer to wear something a little bit ready in the autumn. I actually really like wearing quite a lot of makeup in the autumn winter, so let me know if you'd like to see more of a 
like when I actually properly, properly wear makeup. Oh, maybe I do an evening tutorial. Well, I never go out in the evenings. Yeah, kind of a sticking point. Guys, there is one new product. I know, this is very exciting. Everything else in this tutorial. I showed you a million and one times before, but this is awesome. This is from Trish McAvoy. This is their high volume mascara, Jet Black. I don't think it is fully waterproof because my lashes are at a really in-between weird stage. I had them tinted and lifted months ago now, maybe like, three months ago, for a really, really long time. That should only last about six weeks, but for some reason, my eyelashes, they're hardy old things, they're still in, so I've kind of got a half and half lash. Half of them are straight and, you know, have obviously shed and come back straight. Half of them are still hanging around and they're really curled. So when I use a mascara that isn't waterproof, some of them stay curled, obviously the ones that are naturally curled, and then the ones that are long, like naturally kind of droop down. I've just curled them now with the Surratt eyelash curlers. These are the best eyelash curlers. If you're like me and you have really down pointy eyelashes, you need these in your life. But I really love this mascara. I feel like if Glossier were to come out with a mascara, this is what I would want them to come out with. It's one of those tubing mascaras, so it creates like little tubes around your eyelashes, which really gives the illusion of length, which I'm super into. And it comes off so easily. You can literally just take it off with hot water and kind of go like that and it comes off. But it doesn't smudge throughout the day. It's quite incredible. The brush for it is tiny. Like, I don't know if you can see how thin that is. It's a very thin, straight brush. It's very simple. Um, but I really like how it looks on my eyelashes. I will show you now. It's just a very natural lash. You're not going to get loads of volume out of this, but you are going to get separation and length. So the finished look is quite fluttery and natural and I really like it and it's very rare for me to find mascaras that I like. I'm very picky about them, you guys know that. I'm very loyal, I go back and just use the same mascaras again and again. So it's quite nice to find a new one to put into the routine, I really like that. And then for lips, I obviously love the Glossier Generation G and when I look into my makeup box here, they're basically the three that I've been wearing all month. But this isn't a favourites video, this is a subtle, natural makeup. So I'm going to show you this. This is the Glossier Cherry Balm.com. I bought this when they launched in the UK and I just bought loads of balm.coms because I kept losing them and I love them. The coconut one is my favourite. Um, I actually found this in my car door yesterday. I don't know how it got there. So I kind of kept misplacing things and I just wanted to make sure that I just always had one at my disposable. But disposable? <laughs> at my disposal, which now I do. And I was always put off by this one because it says that it has a red tint. And when you look on the website, it looks really red. It looks full on and I thought, no, that's terrifying. I do not want a red tint in this form that I have to apply with my fingers. That's so messy. But it is so sheer. I'm gonna put this on now and you'll be like, your lips look exactly the same colour. It, it adds a tint, but a very, like a 2% tint, like very, very, very low percentage tint. The smell is like the smell of the cherries that you used to get with a doll that was called My Baby All Gone. Me and my sister had My Baby All Gone when we were younger. I asked her to smell this. I said, what does it remind you of? She said, the cherries from My Baby All Gone. You used to have like a pot of cherries and you'd put this spoon in and then you would feed your baby with the spoon with the cherries on. This is exactly what it smells like. It's very artificial. Personally, I love that. I love a good like marzipan-y cherry scent. I think it smells awesome. But less babbling about My Baby All Gone. I put it on my lips now. There's a bit of a tint there. It's a bit rosy. It's a little bit pinky. But like when it comes out like that, it definitely doesn't transfer as red onto the lips. But that is the finished look. A very obvious tutorial of a look that I have shown you a million and one times before. But there were two new things in there. I think two new things. And it's just always fun to check in and show you guys my current makeup routine. Because they're quite fun for me to look back on in a couple of years time and be like, oh. Do you remember when I loved the My Baby All Gone lip balm? That was great. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. There is lots of new stuff coming for you next week. Some really fun style things. A haul is on its way. More vlogs. So I will see you then. I've already said thanks for watching. I've already said see you then. Bye.